Hey, Ali. Heard you guys for the University of- Bruh. Congrats, man. Hey, thanks, man. Would you want to- Bruh. State University, though. That's hella impressive. Hey, thanks, man. By the way, what major did you choose? Well, you see, after a really long, thoughtful decision that I based a ton of facts on, I decided to major in computer science. Guess I'm gonna major in computer science. Wait, what even is computer science? What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Now this is a question that I didn't get the answer to until my sophomore year of college. Like what even is computer science? And when I was younger, I thought computer science was pretty much pulling the plug out of the Wi-Fi router and putting it back in, but like on a much larger scale. And I was wrong. And then fast forward to high school, I thought computer science was building cool apps and websites for businesses. And I was pretty much wrong again. Computer science is basically a theoretical math degree, which also has some actual math, statistics, algorithms, maybe some physics. And uh, you also had a program. You'll essentially be solving these ambiguously abstract problems that you probably never have to deal with on your day-to-day -day job after college. So in this video, I wanna go over what to expect and what you need to know about on majoring in computer science. And uh, I'm gonna throw a lot of stuff at you guys, but please don't feel overwhelmed. You're gonna have three to five years to learn everything I'm saying. And also try to set date until the end of the video. Some of the stuff at the beginning might really dissuade you guys from pursuing a CS degree, but some of the stuff in the end might make you say, hey, I'll give it a shot. So the first thing you guys should know is you don't need any programming experience whatsoever to pursue a computer science degree. I don't know why this is, but people who've never coded before see coding as like amazingly complex, abstract skill, which takes years to learn is super difficult but that's really not the case. Uh, if you don't know how to code, don't let that be the thing holding you back from pursuing a CS degree. I remember back in high school when I took AP CompSci for the first time, I was so intimidated by people who knew how to code in multiple languages or have been coding for multiple years. But the thing is, once you pick up the base, you'll learn that coding isn't very hard at all. And just for reference, I learned seven new programming languages last year. Scheme, OCaml, Smalltalk, Perl, Prolog, JavaScript, and OpenGL. And I also learned HTML and assembly as well. Those aren't really programming languages. But uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is if you don't know how to code, I promise that will not be a problem. You'll learn in relatively no time at all. Now on to my second point, like a CS degree is way more than this programming. You have to be decent with math. At the bare minimum, expect to take derivative based calc, integral based calc, multivariable or vector calc, linear algebra, discrete math, and also math in your physics and statistics classes. I actually wasn't the best at math back in high school, but I did work pretty hard in college and I made a lot of progress. Now also, once you take those basic math classes, expect to take classes in data structure and algorithms. These are basically just theoretical math classes where you're calculating the runtime of algorithms and just working on theoretical proofs. Now the good news is you won't be expected to be amazing at math. I remember these like vague theoretical math proofs when you graduate college, if you wanna be say a software engineer, which is where a lot of CS majors go towards but you will have to take these math classes in college to get that CS degree. And if you wanna go to something like artificial intelligence, expect a lot more complicated math. And the last thing you guys should know, and let's just throw it out there, uh, computer science is hard. So it comes to shock to a lot of people because about 10% of all CS students drop out of college and about 27% of them switch from CS into a different major. I'm not sure where I got the statistics from, but I know they're credible, so trust me on that. So why is CS so difficult? Well, it could be some of the stuff I mentioned above, like you have to expect to know a lot of math, um, but to be honest, it comes down to two main reasons. And the first one is that computer science kind of builds on itself. If you struggle with something like types in your intro to programming class, then when you take intro to data structures, you're gonna struggle so hard because you're dealing with a bunch of weird errors we should be learning something completely different. You know, struggle 50 times harder in advanced data structure and algorithms. It just builds and builds and builds. 
Another example is if you slack off in linear algebra, then every single computer graphic class is just gonna be hell on earth if you don't understand how matrices are being transformed and how vectors work and stuff like that. So for CS, and this thing's all engineering fields in general, you have to give your best on every single class to do well. If you slack off in any class, then every other class becomes 10 times harder. The other reason why I feel like computer science is so difficult is that it's mostly self-taught. Yeah, you might have some amazing professors or friends to help you out, you can't go to them for every single little bug or issue or homework problem you run into. Like you have to learn to figure that stuff out on your own. And you can get away with it for your first couple of classes in college, but we get into like upper day, no one's gonna sort through hundreds of thousands of lines of your program to find out where this issue is coming from. You have to do that on your own through online resources or a textbook, or whatever else you got. Also think about like your real world applications to this. Like, the person next to you in your job is gonna work on the same project you're working on. So if you go to them or your boss for every single issue you run into, you're probably not gonna work there much longer. But I'm not saying you shouldn't get help. If you're really struggling in college, like there are TAs and professors, office hours, they can help you. Just try to do as much as you can on your own. See them as like a last resort. Now I know those three things might scare a lot of people. Before you quit for good, let me just give you a little bit of advice. I think it's personally better to try something and fail at it than just be afraid of trying. I know back when I was in high school, I didn't think I was nearly as smart as my other classmates. I was pretty bad at math, especially calc, and I had very little programming skills. But I thought CS seemed so cool, and I figured I'd rather try it than go to college undeclared. And that was one of the best decisions that I ever made. So if you guys are on the fence about whether or not CS is for you, I recommend you guys take an intro to programming class and an intro to data structures class. Depending on how much you like and how well you do in only those two classes, that'll be a pretty good indicator of how much you'll like CS. And by the way, it's a lot easier to go into college as a CS major and then say, hey, it's not for me to switch to something else than it is vice versa. I know a lot of schools won't even let you switch into computer science or even any engineering major now because of how impacted they are. So if you're interested or on the fence about it, give it a shot, take those two classes and see how you do. So those are my four things, I guess, everyone should know before they decide to major in computer science. I shouldn't know any of those things back in high school, but so I take classes like discrete math and linear algebra just came as a big shock to me, along with how I'm expected to just learn on my own. Uh, but thankfully I still like CS and I'm pursuing the degree now. And uh, so I'm making this video for all of you guys. Okay, so now that we covered all of that, here's the course we're gonna be doing in college. I'm gonna fly by this really quick, but your school probably has a pathway that you guys will follow as well. Just search up your school name, computer science pathway, and the year you're entering college and the year before that. So for me, that's UC Santa Cruz computer science pathway 2017 to 2018. Your fall quarter will probably be taking an intro to programming class, a calculus class, and some GE. Since your first quarter will be something your school mandates, like a writing class. Uh, for me, it was an international global perspectives class based on where I was on the campus. Intro to programming teaches the basics of programming, and then calc is Cal. For the rest of the year, you'll be taking more math classes like linear algebra, which covers matrices, vectors, and how to transform and move them around, as well as discrete math, which covers logic and how to turn real world problems into math problems. It'll be the first thing that's work with theoretical proofs. And then probably another calc class. And oh, you'll also be taking intro to data structures and algorithm. This is the class which will teach you your first hands-on experience how data is efficiently stored in the real world, like through linked lists, binary search trees, hash tables, all that stuff. And there'll also be some more theoretical proofs in that class as well. And throughout your freshman year, you'll be taking a bunch of random GEs uh, and writing classes to fulfill your school's mandating requirements. So you'll graduate, and since you're like, a well-rounded student. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, freshmen are people have the biggest egos. They took AP Comm Sci in high school, they wrote some Python over the summer, and they think they own the CS department. But uh, don't worry, after some Cal classes and some programming classes, there'll be technology management or, what's the other one? Business, by the end of the year. I remember my freshman year, there was a bunch of these like Chinese students who would who, like, sat by me uh, in class and they like all tried to sound so smart. Like, yo, I'm gonna open a private GitHub repository and then write in IntelliJ, IDA, IDE, and I'm gonna commit it as I go. And they just tried so hard to, hard to sound smart. And then I didn't realize at the time, I thought they were hella smart. And then I learned what they were saying and I'm like, wow, they're just, they're trying so hard to be cool but they're CS majors. Now the summer after your freshman year, try to nail an internship. If not, that's totally normal. Then I recommend you guys take community college classes back home to fill your GE requirements. 
Not only are GEs like a million times easier community college, but you'll also boost your heading credits, which matters a lot because upper div CS classes are very hard to get into. And the more credits you have, the easier they are to get. Now your sophomore year, you'll be taking some more GEs, physics class or two, a stats class, an integral and or multivariable calc. Sometime your sophomore year though, you're gonna take advanced data structures and algorithms. And this is probably the most important class you're ever gonna take in college because most interview questions you're going to get get pulled straight from this class. So take it really seriously and do well in that one. It's usually called CS 101, but it'll depend on what school you go to. Once you take advanced data structures and algorithms and whatever else your school mandates, you'll be allowed to take upper division CS class. These are the cool classes you can narrow in your focus on what you want to do in the future whether it's web design, compilers, graphics, AI, all that good stuff. And then your school will also make you take some computer engineering classes to make you well-rounded, like computer architecture and assembly. Even though it doesn't really, if you're gonna be a CS, uh, what am I saying? Despite that, if you're in CS, you probably don't care about how a computer works, just that it works and you can write code in it. And then your junior and senior year, you'll be taking those upper division CS classes, computer engineering class or two, maybe a stats class. And then whatever else your school mandates, maybe you'll pick up a minor or something, but that's pretty much it. At least you guys get internships over the summer though, because those do matter a lot for real world experience and help you get that first job out of college. And that's pretty much computer science for you guys. I knew I threw a lot of stuff at you guys. There'll be a lot of words you've never heard before, but don't worry, just take it one step at a time. You're gonna have three to five years to learn everything I just said. And uh, I also made a day in the life video about what it's like studying computer science at college. Love that video linked below in the description. Be sure to check that one out as well. If this video did help you guys clear up uh, whether or not CS is for you, give me a big thumbs up and I will see you guys next week for the next video.